Good morning, everyone. On the bench here, we have a cat pump, a model 3DX 29 GSI. This is for like a five to six horsepower pressure washer. I picked it up on eBay and for parts or repair condition for another project, which is sitting back there. So previously, uh, I had taken this pump apart. It's pretty easy to do so. Simply remove the eight bolts that hold this manifold onto the pump, like so. Just pull the manifold straight out, and it'll expose the plungers and some other internal parts that I already disassembled. The reason why it was for sale for parts is there were some broken parts. I'll give you a little preview of what they were. Just kind of recapping what took place in the other video. So this little thing that you see right here, this is a retainer. For one of the check valves. So you see the same plastic cage there and down here. Well, you can see there's a piece missing right here. That allowed that spring buried inside to pop out and get stuck in the manifold. So these little metallic pieces here are check valves. So they control uh, the flow of water. So I believe the bottom, bottom is the inlet check valve. So when the piston or the plunger moves away, water comes up through that valve. When the pit plunger comes back this way, it goes up through this valve, the outlet check valve. So they're pretty important for this thing to work right. So I got some parts um, in true Joe's garage fashion. We have, let's see, we have a new check valve kit right here. This is for the CAT 3DX pump. I have a new seal kit. The reason why I bought those is just looking at the manifold, you can see that like this low pressure seal, it's a little torn up around the edge there. Didn't really want to risk putting this thing back together with new parts, only to find that it leaks water and going to have a bad time. Also have a new unloader assembly, just because it's a good idea to service these when you service the uh, check valves and seals. Also have a discharge fitting because this thing did not come with a chemical injector or any sort of discharge fitting. So that's probably enough rambling out of me. Let's start by assembling our check valves. Now you may have noticed that I don't necessarily need all these check valves. I actually could have just gotten away with buying some of these individual components like this cage and the spring that was missing and saved a, boat ton, a boatload of money. Um, probably should have done that because like these other two check valves were just fine, but I figured given the pump's unknown history, might as well just do it right and do everything. So let's, uh, let's razor blade this open. Shiny new parts. They do look the same, right? Yep, sure does. I want to say this kit was about a hundred bucks. Pretty expensive, if you ask me, for what it is. All right, let me finish fishing all the parts out of here, and then we'll put them together. I will say I'm not a fan of this shrink-wrapped packaging. I mean, this is horrible. It's like this plastic is stuck on here. Shame on you. Okay, about 10 minutes later, we got everything out of the packaging. Now we can start assembling. So assembly is actually pretty straightforward. Let's start with the low pressure. So I'm gonna take the seat, the actual check valve, the spring, and then just plop one of these actually Yes, it's fine. Sometimes the spring gets crooked in the retainer. Just don't lose it. Did I mention these parts aren't cheap? And just push down. There we go. The spring might be a little crooked in there. You can fix that with a little small screwdriver after the fact.
there we go. So that's what you're that's what you're aiming for right there. So that spring pushes that seat or the, that check valve against the seat and that's what allows it to seal water. And we'll do that exact procedure three more times. Okay, minus the three O-rings in the bottom, those three are fully assembled. And the procedure for the high pressure seals is exactly the same. High pressure check, the, the high pressure side, I'm sorry, not seals, these aren't seals. High pressure seals are over here, this other blister package we get to deal with. Okay, so let's do that same thing. There we go. Recommend gloving up because eventually you'll destroy your thumbs doing this. It's a pretty tight fit between these plastic retainer, between these plastic cages and the seats. Got to push down pretty hard. There we go. So there's one of the high pressure check, uh, check valves. Do that three more times. Correction, two more times. All right, so we got our three high pressure outlet check valves, our three low pressure inlet check valves. Now we gotta put O-rings on them. So the big fat O-rings go on the outlet. Just kind of roll them on there with your fingers. Not that difficult. Hard part's over, believe me. And then the reason we did that is because now we have to plop these onto the low pressure inlets because this is a stacked valve assembly. So to do that, simply put one on top of the other. Get your thumb saver and push. It went together surprisingly easily. No thumb saver required. All right, now we'll put our O rings on the low pressure inlet. check valves are done. Okay, now that we got our check valves assembled here, um, let's move on to the seals. I took the seals out of the packaging, and I'll be honest with you, a lot of these seals, like these, these seals look very similar here. So one set is the high pressure seals, one set is the low pressure seals. I'm not really sure which is which. Um, you can see that these three seals have more of a gray color than these. These are also a little bit taller. So I'm guessing these are the high pressure seals and these are the low pressure seals, but I think the best way to confirm that is probably to take one of these bad boys out and just compare. So these lift, should just lift right out. There's an O-ring on them. You kind of have to pry it up with a screwdriver, being careful not to damage anything. It can be tricky. Just be patient and work it out. She's coming. There we go. So you can see what we're dealing with here. So this right here should be our high pressure seal. And this one's all it's all chewed up. I don't know if you guys can see that. So it's a good thing we're doing this. So I think we'll start by removing this seal here. To do that, let's get a screwdriver under there. Let's just place it back and make it a little bit easier. 
And just gently pry, but try not to mess up that packing there. So there's our seal. Let's compare it to these. Okay, so these tall ones are actually the low pressure seals. So that's, that's an identical height right there. So these ones that are your gray color, those are the low pressure seals. These other ones are the high pressure seals. Uh, let's see, how, oh, this just pops right off, okay? So it just kind of fell off. Let's confirm. Yeah, pretty much the same. And that was, yeah, it was that side. It was like that. So the, the open piece was facing down. Get you guys some more light. So you can see the seal has a top and a bottom. So this, this part faces the inside of the manifold. All right, so let me clean this up a bit. Um, there's some, still some goo in here even after going through the ultrasonic a couple times. So clean that up and we'll pick it back up. Change my mind, let's take the rest of these apart first. So I can put them back in the same spot. I'll leave them in order. Okay, so this high pressure seal stayed in here, but not anymore. What I'll do is I'll just go like that. So we know what seal came out of what bore. I don't think it matters, but just to abundance of caution. And this middle one's in there pretty good. Let me work on that off camera. Okay, I got the pieces cleaned up a little bit more. Next step is going to be to take our high pressure seals, which again are these, the, the shorter of the two seals, low pressure or taller, high pressure or shorter. We install them face down, so that groove that you see there faces down. I'm going to lubricate the outside of the seal slightly and just push it into place with my fingers, hopefully. Just using a little bit of silicone grease that you use on plumbing just to help ease it into place. too. Very well, tough to get in there. Wants to go in crooked. I might get a socket that's the same outside diameter and use that to kind of push it into place. Let's see. Uh, 11 16's deep drive. Looks like it might do the trick. Yeah, that helped. 
Okay. So we'll do the same thing for the remaining two seals. Okay, got all three of our high pressure seals installed. Now we can take our low pressure seals, do the same thing. We push them into these seal retainers here, going to lubricate the outside, same deal as before. Just using a little bit of silicone on the outside, just like the high pressure seals. Easy. Okay, so now we have our high and low pressure seals all installed. We can get the old ones out of the way. Um, now we have to replace the O-ring on the outside of these things. I'll try using a seal pick. Nice. All right, now all we have to do is lubricate these O-rings and push these bad boys back into place. I realize I probably mixed up the positioning, but it's not the end of the world. Great. All right, now the last thing is to change the O-rings on these plugs here. Before we do that, we're gonna insert our new check valves though. Those are kind of important. So when you insert the check valves, same thing, we're gonna lubricate these O-rings. So, let's simply push the valve into place, hopefully. Oh, that one's going in crooked.
Interesting. Does not want to go in. Okay, got it in. Actually went in in two pieces, so the bottom slipped in, separated from the top, and then I was able to push the top in place. It's not the most straightforward thing in the world. See if we can do this valve together. Okay, that one just fell right into place. Go figure. As you can see, there's not too, too much that can go wrong with these. They're pretty simple pumps. And probably pumps that are replaced far more often than they need to be because of simple seal or check valve issues. I'm assuming that a lot of these issues are caused by running the pump dry, running it without circulating cool water through it so the pump can overheat. So take care of your pump, it'll take care of you. I have pressure washer pumps that I haven't touched since the 90s, but I take care of them. They run just fine. Now I'm taking the, oops, taking the, the O-rings off of these plugs here. Because they give you new O-rings in the kit. I think they come in the check valve kit, if I remember correctly. All right, now that we have our check valve installed, we're gonna take some blue Loctite. Actually, no, we'll put these plugs on last once the manifold is attached to the pump. Before we do that, let's take these plungers off. We have to replace a seal. Just a 10 millimeter socket. Pretty sure these are Loctited on too. Good idea to examine your plungers for cracks or anything else. You can clean them up at this time too. That one looks fine. So we just take this seal off right here, discard that and use one of the new seals in the kit. One looks fine too.
Okay, all the plungers are looking good. Okay, now we have to apply some blue Loctite to the exposed threads. I'm just going to do a drop, doesn't take much. Thread that back in. This gets torqued to 55 inch pounds. torque wrench here. Okay. All there is to it. A little bit of Loctite on this one. one of those cases where you probably want to use a torque wrench because these ceramic plungers are not cheap to replace if you crack and break one from over torquing it. And the last one. Okay, let's reinstall our manifold. You want to be careful because you got all new seals here. Go very gently. Very carefully slide the plungers back into the seals. It's a bit tight. does fit. Can reinstall our manifold bolts now. Now they do need to be tightened in a specified sequence. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, I think is the correct sequence. As long as you just don't like tighten this one and this one, this one, this one, just do like a crisscross inside out and you'll be fine. The exact sequence isn't super important. Now the pump might be a bit stiff to turn because again, these are brand new seals. The seals create a lot of friction. But you should be fine. You guys forgot to remind me to install a part. How'd that happen? I forgot to install those plastic seal retainers that were on the pistons. So let me take this thing apart again. And that's how it came apart. Those seals really wanted to stay on there, huh? May have to pull them off individually. All right, got everything apart. These are those uh, retainers I was talking about. I'd imagine that without these, those seals could just walk out, which would be bad. Let's try that again for the second time. Man, these 
these seals are stiff. Got all the head bolts fifth, uh, finger tight. I don't have a, um, this is a 3A socket. I don't have a quarter inch to 3A adapter, believe it or not. So I'm going to use my 3A torque wrench set to five foot pounds. Starting from the middle and working my way out. Let's finger tight those again. That's five. Very subtle click. All right, we're good. Next step is to install these plugs. You want to put a little bit of Loctite on these as well. I think these, what size socket were these? Three quarter? Yep, three quarter. So let's see, I think I'll forego lubricant for the o-ring in favor of making sure these things don't come out while I'm using them. We'll be fine. It really doesn't take a whole lot of Loctite to have the desired effect, so don't go nuts with that. Just a drop or so. Snug it up with our wrench. There we go. Next up is our unloader repair kit. Again, this may not be something that was absolutely needed, but it's a good idea to do this anytime you're servicing the check valve for the seal. So. Wasn't that expensive, so I'm just electing to do it. We make it pretty easy for you too. There is a seat down there that you can extract. Um, don't really see the seats going bad all that often. I just think is there, this is what the seat looks like. So I'm just gonna leave that one in place until we see if we have a problem. I'm not exactly sure how I would get it out, to be honest with you. So let's put some lubricant on these o-rings. Oops, this bad boy just screws in there. Sorry about that. Snug that down. Just going to use a deep drive three quarter inch socket. That should do it. Now we need our lock nut, which should be in here somewhere but I'm not seeing it. Where did it go? Maybe it ended up in the ultrasonic clear. Let me go look for it. 
Oh boy, I'm a dunce. It was screwed onto the old unloader. You guys probably saw it. That goes on there like so. We'll take our little spacer thingies that were down here. And we simply right on that cap. I'm not gonna tighten it down because it's gonna need to be adjusted, but that'll at least be good enough to, to test the pump out. One thing I'm a bit sure of is that this just discharge fitting also comes with an option um, to have a chemical injector. I think I mentioned before I don't need that chemical injector, but it looks like there's provisions in here for a check valve. I'm not sure what the check valve is for, to be honest with you. Um, so I'm gonna try to run this pump without it and we'll see what happens. I may regret it later on, who knows. So this is our 3 ace pipe thread fitting that we'll hook our fittings onto. All right, I think that's gonna be a wrap until we get a chance to test this thing. It might be a little while, so we'll just leave it on the bench and we'll plug it into Mr. Pressure Washer back there once uh, I have an opportunity. Okay, it's about a week later. I yanked the old pump off the engine, it's pretty straightforward, just remove the four bolts and it slides right off. And I replaced it with this cap pump that we just rebuilt. So had to install this mounting plate, then the pump, a total of eight screws. Now it looks a little bit different than you looked at than you saw it last time though perhaps because there's a lot of stuff on the side here. So I added the discharge fitting here. Um, I did end up buying and installing that check valve that I think I mentioned previously. It's just a spring, two O-rings, and a plunger. Don't exactly know what it's for. If anybody knows why it's needed, um, just let me know. Say something in the description, in the comments. Uh, but it was pretty clear this thing was designed to, to work with a check valve, just looking at the insides. I installed this 45 degree fitting here to avoid this tube. I did end up having to put a slight bend in this because this did not clear. Um, you don't really even notice it. Um, so yeah, I got the discharge fitting, 45 and then a quick coupler. Down here on the inlet side, we got another 45. We have this um, strainer. This is a, a general pump part. I can leave the links in the description for this thing. It's like maybe 25, 30 bucks. It's got a screen on the inside that'll filter out any particulate matter so it doesn't hit your pump. And we have a um, thermal relief valve down here that I think is calibrated to 140 degrees. So if the water gets too hot, this will open and dump water out. And then we just have a, a regular you know, brass um, quick disconnect for the garden hose. So that's that. Um, not much to it. We got oil in the pump. Um, so let's give her a try. pump works pretty good. Uh, I guess I should say pretty well. So anyway, if I hope this video helped you, if you have a CAT 3DX pump um, that is not producing any pressure, as just to summarize, this one needed a seal and a valve kit. Um, it's kind of expensive to do, but these pumps are expensive to buy, so it's probably worth it in the end. Anyway, if you found this video helpful, please subscribe. Stay safe. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.